if this Rayquaza is binded, there's not much chance of it being able to, well, there's no chance of it being able to protect, and I would say from that damage that it probably is. Oh, what have we done? What Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of uh, VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today we're going to be continuing on again with this ho -Oh and Kyogre build that we started with at the, the beginning of the week. Uh, we made some adjustments on Tuesday and we've kind of continued them on from there. Uh, we've been a bit up and down with the team. We faced some mad things, especially yesterday, an Iron Ball Kyogre of all things, uh, which totally threw us off. Hopefully we can... Get back on the train, get things moving in today's episode. So without further ado, we'll just jump straight on to the ladder. I hope you're all doing well, having a great day, whatever you're up to. And uh, as always, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please remember to drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel and uh, leave your comments down below, especially about the team. But what cores you would like to see played next week, because we're going to end up with this team this week. We're just going to play it for this week, and then we'll move on to a new team for next week. So if you've got any ideas, any burning desire to play any sort of cores, archetypes, or Pokemon in general, do let me know down below, and I will make sure to try and play as many of them as possible. We've got a first opponent of the episode, so we'll hop straight into team preview. Okay, so our first opponent today playing a team of Drifblim, Tapu Lele, Groudon, Kurum White, Togekiss, and Zapdos. So it's screaming um, gravity hypnosis stuff all day long. Uh, we've got the support and cast, we've got Tailwind support from Togekiss, and uh, the Zapdos, and the Drifblim. Uh, so predominantly that's the route that my opponents are going to go down, I think, here. Um, this is going to be tough. Because I don't feel like we've got... I think stack attack is going to be important for us with its wide guard support. Uh, it deals with the Tapu Lele quite nicely as well. And pretty much the majority of the team. Um, so I think we will go down that route with stack attacker. Um, right. I think we'll go stacks. As uh, lead with Incineroar. We definitely need Kyogre in this match. And mm, probably ho oh you know. ho oh you know. Uh, yeah, I think as long as we're not up against Zapdos as a last Pokemon, then I, it, we should be alright. So let's click in with that. And let's get into this first one today. Right, let's see. I always hate playing these sort of teams. I think they're so difficult to kind of play against because you give them a tiny bit of room and they'll just run through you. So hopefully it's not going to be as clean cut today. Um, and I think like turn one we just have to allow my opponent to go for the hypnosis onto something and try and get through the sleep turns as best we can. I am going to snarl. Uh, the one thing I would worry about a little bit would be maybe the Phytinium on the Tapu Lele. Uh, it could really deal with stack attacker and uh, put the stoppers on us being able to do very much straight away. I think we'll try and get a trick room up because I, I feel like the uh, majority of my opponent's team is pretty fast, pretty speedy, so a trick room will help us out a bunch. I'm going to see an icy wind come out. Okay. I wonder if it is the Phytinium then. Potentially trying to break a sash on a, a stack attacker and then going for it now with Lele. Oh, it's taunt. Okay, well, I mean, that's fine. I don't mind that either. We'll get a Snarl off, which is always going to be useful against both of these sorts of Pokemon. Um, I think we're going to have to switch stacks out, though. Um, we could do potentially U-turn with Incineroar onto the Tapu Lele or the Drip Blim. Um, bring in Kyogre. Oh, it's tricky, though. Maybe bring in... Yeah, I don't want to bring in Kyogre just yet. I'm going to bring in ho -Oh there, and I'm going to go for a U-turn into the Lele. And hopefully we don't see... I don't think we're going to see the Gravity shenanigans just yet. We might see Gravity from Lele, but the, the fact is that it's slower than the Drift Blim. That doesn't kind of marry up as well, that um, Gravity Hypnosis. Blind Hypnosis works, though, doesn't it? Oh! And there's the Gravity. Everything gonna go to sleep. Um, yeah, so there we go. Well, I'll we'll just have to try and get around it. That's a bet. That's like 
the best what all we can do is try and play around it uh, with these teams I think that's the best way to approach it as well not try and make any fancy plays you've just got to kind of take it and try hopefully get through it the best you can um, so I'll bring in stacks I think I'm gonna have to switch out Horto straight away I want Incineroar on do I want it I think I might just take a turn to um, stall out uh, we'll try and trick room we'll try and trick room we're not gonna get it I just I just worry about the Groudon coming in now um, and we need to try and get yeah we're gonna see it we need to try and get a um, an intimidate onto the Groudon rather than bring it in and Cineral right now and then we do burn through a turn of sleep at least with um, with Horto going to see gravity, uh, hypnosis, sorry, definitely, yeah. Uh, if we only had Lumberry, if we only had Lumberry. Right, well, I mean, one option we've potentially got, no, I think we need to switch in to Incineroar here. The one option we've got is hoping that no, we need the Intimidate. We 100% need the Intimidate because Hort is not really going to be able to take these Precipice Blades otherwise. Um, we could... We could Wide Guard here. Hope Stack Attacker wakes up. Come on, Stacks. Wake up. Wake up, Stacker. Please wake up. That would make things all right in the world if we can just wake up this turn. Mm. <laughs> Icy Wind again. Okay. I hope an Incineroar takes the precipice. It should do from this range. Proca Berry. And then Stack Attacker will go down. Uh, but we can get Kyogre onto the field. Man. It's too much damage, doesn't it? It's just too much damage. Okay, we'll bring in Kyogre. I'm going to switch Incin out for Hot Alt. And just to try and hope that we can get like some Intimidate back onto the field for this Groudon. Um, We can't fake out with the psychic terrain up, and I think it really, it really hurts when you haven't got your own terrain to override the psychic terrain. Ah, <sighs> these teams, these teams. Right, get the hot onto the field. We're going to take another precipice. It'll be interesting to see how much hot or takes from this. Yep. Okay, well, we'll get the berry with the hot on. Uh, potentially, we could try and get a tailwind up and switch into Incineroar. Uh, or we could weather ball and hope that hot on wakes up. But I don't think we take. I think we've got to try and Tailwind and get Incineroar onto the field and hope we can just take this next Precipice Blades. See a Hypnosis come into the Kyogre for sure from the, the Drift Blim. So it's all about Hotel waking up, getting the Tailwind up and then we might be in a good place because the Precipice should take down Incineroar now. Uh, there's a Hypnosis here. But the problem is the Groudon just switches out and switches back in and then, yeah, we've lost our range so things get very, very difficult very quickly. Because I doubt my opponent will um, will leave the Groudon in if the horse stays asleep here when knackered. Yeah, we are. Oh. 
And gravity does turn back to normal. But the ground on just, like I say, the ground on just switches out here. But we can water spout, I think, like, we'll tailwind and water spout. And we'll try. We've got to try Groudon switching out. Yeah, we're going to see it. Kieran coming in. Okay. As long as a blind hypnosis doesn't hit, well, we should be able to do something. I see wind coming out. That's still not the worst. As long as Holto wakes up and gets his tailwind up now. Come on. I hate you, Holto. <laughs> Oh, oh, you are the worst. Okay, well, we're not going to get either. Um, I think our last ditch attempt is to try and tailwind and protect Kyogre and hope that my opponent goes for the Kyogre <coughs> with the Kyurem rather than um, the ho oh. Because we should take an icy wind. Although this isn't really helping us out too much because now Hotos speed's just neutralized. If we do get an icy wind up, um, a tailwind up, Dragon Pulse. Now you're going for the, the hot oil. Okay. Well that's it. That's it. That's game. Oh, I hate these teams. I hate these sorts of teams. And it's never a team that I really um I really especially for the channel when I'm putting these teams together, it's never a team that I really consider building against but you should always have countermeasures for it I guess um, well we'll we'll ice beam the drift blim but I don't think I think yeah we're not even gonna see the ground on come in I'm just gonna forfeit this next turn ah uh, yeah and it's always these teams it's weird like I'll, I'll, I'll like if I'm ever practicing I'll never ever bump into them and you know what I, I always make sure <laughs> with any tournament team I've got ways and answers around this sort of stuff because I think like you come up against it in a tournament if you just don't have ways to stop the hypnosis gravity um, and you have to rely on the sleep turns uh, being really quick for you to get around this sort of team then you're never going to beat it it's always going to be one of those teams that you need answers for um, so when like I'll go back to when I say I'm practicing I, I never really have issues with these teams because I always have I hate them because of these episodes <laughs> and I make sure that I've got answers for them so not the greatest of starts for us today good game to my opponent nice team uh, as always but uh, a little bit leaves a sour taste in the mouth but it's just because we haven't got the, the right tools to uh, set up against it to be honest the psychic train hurts us because we rely so heavily on our fake out support and we've got nothing to stop or help us around the um, the sleep spam either so yeah there's not really too much we can do about that um, right so let's continue on and uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent ah those teams it's probably not a bad idea to play a team like that for a tournament. We've got an next opponent anyway. Um, so we'll get straight into it. And they are playing a team of Rayquaza, Mewtwo, Incineroar, Amoongus, Tapu Lele, and Crobat. So going along the theme of these episodes uh, this week, uh, we've got another psychic pairing here, Tapu Lele and the Mewtwo. So potentially double Megas here, but I'd imagine it'd be Mega Ray and then just regular old Mewtwo. Can have speed control from the Crobat, uh, but that's about it. The Amoongus is going to be there to be a little bit of a trick room deterrent. Um, Ho-Ho here does such a good job, I, I think. I feel ho is really strong in this matchup. Uh, so ho and Incineroar definitely want the Intimidate support. Gives us an option against the Amoongus as well, along with the ho -Oh. Um, and that, that psychic pairing as well. Um, I'll bring Kyogre because it's generally going to be quite good. And do we want Raichu in this match? Or Sceptile? I mean, if we can remove the Lele. Pending that it's scarfed. I think Sceptile's quite good. If the Lele's not scarfed, then it's, it's a bit easier. And then Sceptile does give us that kind of switch into Amoongus spores if, if that is a bit of a threat at any point. Um, yeah, we'll go with Sceptile. 
or bring the sept and we'll see. See how we do in this one. Ah. Just not happy about that last match. Just not happy about it. But there's nothing you can do. There's no point in dwelling on it. This is when you when you dwell on matches, you tilt and you get things wrong. So we've just got to just forget about it. Move on. This is what we're playing now. Can't do anything about what's happened. We'll reflect on it at a later date. But right now, it's not the time. So we need to concentrate. Good and hard on what my opponent's going to try to do. Are they going to taunt or to prevent our tailwind? Because it's... It's something that I would like to get up, but if they taunt us, they can go for their tailwind the next turn. Uh, whereas we could just attack. I think the fake out onto the ray is pretty obvious. Um, I could just double into the the crowbat with a U-turn and a brave bird, and I think I'd probably prefer to do that. It just mitigates the, the 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 issue if they do taunt us and we waste a turn. And I don't really like doing that at all if we can avoid it. Now they may tailwind and then we may fall behind, but then again, um, if they want to taunt us, they've got to spend another turn doing that, and uh, that's another turn where they're not damaging us. The ray going to switch out, uh, suspecting probably a uh, fake out into that slot. Uh, and the crowbar actually going for that taunt into the, the hot or there, so uh, we make the, the right call for once and uh, we get the brave bird into the crowbat so we'll get some good damage onto it here I wouldn't think we're gonna pick up a knockout or anything like that but some nice damage there and a u-turn onto the crowbat and um, we can potentially bring in septile here but it's just whether or not the Mewtwo. Mm, no, we'll bring in Kyogre. We'll bring in Ogre. Because then we can switch oh, out to Incineroar. We could Scald. I mean, we might see a double up. I think my opponent probably... Well, do they want to get the Tailwind up? I don't know if they do, really. Um, because potentially we could just Brave Bird the Crowbat um, and just protect Kyogre this turn. I need my I need my charger because my battery's gonna. Hopefully my battery lasts. Hopefully it does. Mewtwo is just gonna protect this turn. Uh, we'll protect with Kyogre as well. I don't want to take Super Fang damage. That's one thing, but we are gonna see the Tailwind. Yeah. And I think by doing this and keeping these Pokemon out on the field right now, it means that Incineroar is sticking around in the back. Because Incineroar would be the, the natural switch in here if we were to bring anything in for these two this turn. Uh, it means that when the Rayquaza comes back onto the field, at least we've got that Intimidate to, to kind of spam again. If we would like to. Uh, Tapu Lele going to come back onto the field, which is... I don't mind this too much. Um... Yeah, so I think we'll switch out with ho oh, into Incineroar right now. And I think I'm going to go for a Scald. Do you attack the Kyogre though, or the ho -Oh? I'd say you probably go after the ho -Oh. That's why I'm kind of switching out into Incineroar. We'll keep it in though, we'll go the other way. I'm going to get some damage onto the Tapu Lele. Uh, with a Brave Bird and switch in Incineroar for Kyogre. Um, I want to try and keep Kyogre as healthy as possible. <clears throat> the other argument would be trying to preserve ho -Oh at this point so we can Tailwind later in the game when that taunt isn't isn't an issue. Um, but ho -Oh should take at least an attack from, from either one of these. Psyshock into the ho -Oh. Hopefully this just procs our berry. Yeah, okay. And then I'm hoping the Mewtwo goes after the Kyogre now. Yeah, okay, that's good. So we'll get the Brave Bird into the Lele and just get some damage onto it because that's that's the main thing here. Oh, that is good damage. Okay, ho -Oh doing nice work for us here. And we could switch ho -Oh out, but it might be worth just sacking it um, and going for a U-turn into the Lele, which we now know is Scarfed. Um, we could try and Tailwind as well, because if we can get the Tailwind up now, it's going to make things so much easier for us. Um, 
I'll go for a U-turn into the Lele just to get rid of it. Um, if the Ray comes in on that slot and my opponent wants to save the Lele for later, at least we break a potential Sash. So we've got that in the back of my mind as well. Um, and if we can somehow get a, a Tailwind up, I don't think we're going to be able to because the Side Shock will take down Hot Oil. It's just I don't want to switch anything into the Side Shock either. That's the thing. The Mewtwo actually going to protect here. So Hot Oil will go down to Side Shock, unfortunately. But it's better than having anything um, being switched in for it. And then we are able to at least get rid of the Scarf Pokemon, which does threaten our Sceptile. So we'll get, I think we'll get Sceptile onto the field now because it does threaten that Rayquaza pretty heavily. Even though the Mewtwo is um, a bit of a threat for us as well, especially if it's carrying something like Ice Beam, which you'd imagine it probably is. Depending on where the Mega is as well. I don't imagine the Mega is going to be Rayquaza though. The logically thinking out of the two. But you're really looking now at the Ray probably protecting because of the threat of the fake out. Because obviously the psychic train doesn't protect it. So I'm going to snarl. I'm going to mega evolve and I'm going to just protect Sceptile. Because Ray's minus one. If we can get this Mewtwo chipped down to minus one on its special attack, that makes things a bit easier for us. And uh, potentially, if the Ray Quasar doesn't protect, we can break that sash if it is sashed. Always talking about. I'm all. I'm obsessed with the Sash Rayquaza. It's like one of the. It's not really a commonly used item anymore. Okay, so there's the Delta Stream. <coughs> we will Mega Evolve as well. And we'll just scout out what they're gonna do. So there's a Protect on our Sceptile. Mewtwo Side Strike, yeah. Um, Dragon Ascent. That's into the Incineroar. Alright. Well, that means that the Dragon Pulse will definitely take it down the next turn after the drop. Okay, doing some nice damage. Maybe indicating that it is banded. That's a lot of damage on minus one. A lot of damage. Snarl coming out. Okay, that's perfect. Um, Dragon Pulse will be able to get the Ray. Now and um, we should be. We'll just U turn into the Mewtwo and then we can cycle Intimidate once again and uh, set ourselves up nicely for this psychic terrain ending if Sceptile goes down to a Psy strike here, which it may do under the psychic terrain. And if this Rayquaza is binded, there's not much chance of it being able to. Well, there's no chance of it being able to protect, and I would say from that damage that it probably is. Oh, what have we done? What have we done? What have we done? <laughs> what have we done? What have we done? Literally, what have we done? We could have... We... Oh my god. I can't believe this. I've got to hope now that the Dragon Pulse is still going to be enough to take down the Ray. <laughs> Leaf Storm, what are we doing? What are we doing? We've got no right to be playing this game. <laughs> right, okay, let's pay attention to what we're clicking into. We'll go for a, a tasty old Scald into the Mewtwo and we'll click Dragon Pulse. Dragon Pulse, we've clicked it in. It's, it's, re it's done now. We could have got so punished for that. So punished. Fools, fools. That's not coming in clutch for us. I mean, we don't make things easy for ourselves, do we? But an exciting end to the match. And Sceptile, I'm hoping now. It's minus two, but the Rayquaza is minus two as well with its special defense. We should be able to close this one up. It's like we're self-destructing. Like we don't want ourselves to win almost. It's like <laughs> we're doing it on purpose. Like, yeah, we, we don't really want to win with this team. Okay, so we're locked in. We'll see what my opponent goes for. The Dragon Pulse, like I say, coming out now. Thank goodness it's enough to take down the Ray and the Scald will be enough. 
to get the uh, the Mewtwo uh, Sky Strike. How long is this psychic terrain lasting for as well? It feels like it's lasted like way longer than it should have done. But it's done. Mewtwo down. Bye bye. We actually pick up a win. What a mad episode. What a mad episode. Um, but we do pick up a win at least. And we're kind of staying level each day as we're going with this team. So um, tomorrow is going to be the day. We're going to give the team a send off. Hopefully it will be a good send off with two victories. So I'm going to say thank you so much for tuning in my friends. Have a great day and I will see you all for the next one. So until then take care and bye bye.